Hey, it's your boy BT, Brendan Taylor. You're watching 5th Street Gym on South Beach. You're watching True School Sports. Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT. I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I wanted to make a follow-up video to um, the fight from this past weekend between Richard Comey and Jose Pedraza because um, I came to two conclusions after watching the fight. Now, first and foremost, let me tip my cap to both those men. It was a good fight. It was a very evenly matched fight. I would not mind seeing a rematch, and I also think there's a uh, good option for them within the top rank stable. You know, I feel like Pedraza could go fight T.O. in December, which I really think will probably happen. Comey could probably fight Arnold Barbosa Jr. So those, you know, they got options there, or they could do a rematch. There's definitely options for both fighters. But the other realization I came to, and this is the realization that I really wanted to camp out on and make this the main idea of this video. These guys are good. These guys are good at 140. These guys are ex-champions. Uh, you know, uh, Comey was a champion at 135. You know, Pedraza's been a champion at, uh, I believe, 130 and 135. You know, so with that being established here on True School Sports, these guys are these guys are good fighters. You know, maybe not creme to the creme, top top shelf, but but definitely you 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 only you're not beating these guys if you're not a special fighter yourself. Look at look at the guys that have defeated guys like Comey and Pedraza. Guys like Tio. Guys like Tank. Guys like Lomachenko, you know, we're talking about the creme to the creme, pound for pound, people p fighters in the sport. So they're very, they're very good fighters. They're, they're just not great, you know. But there's one fighter at 140. There, 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 there's one fighter at 140 that I, I constantly feel like he's getting overlooked. He's he's not getting his shot, and it, it's actually pissing me off a little bit seeing what's been happening to his career from afar. And um, that fighter is none other than the boss man himself, Kenneth Sims Jr., Chicago's very own Kenneth Sims Jr. Kenneth Sims Jr., for those that don't know or don't remember, this is the same Kenneth Sims Jr. that <clears throat> just last May on the Josh Taylor Jose Ramirez undercard, just last May, he popped the Elvis uh, Rodriguez bubble and stopped the Elvis Rodriguez Jr. hype train before it could even leave the damn station. You know, he beat. And upset Elvis Rodriguez so much so to the point that Top Rank dropped Elvis Rodriguez, and Elvis Rodriguez, Elvis Rodriguez had to sign PBC, and is in the midst of rebuilding his career. But before that, before that Kenneth Sims fight, Elvis Rodriguez was a fighter that was being tabbed to become the next Dominican World Champion, you know, and that hasn't happened for him. Um, and since then, it's really pissed me off what's happened with Kenneth Sims Jr.'s career because I, I've interviewed him before. I've talked to him on one occasion when I, went, when I went to the top ring gym. He's made it very clear in my interviews that, you know, he'd like to fight T.O. He'd like to fight Arnold Barbosa Jr., but top rank hasn't wanted to give him those fights because they know what happened the last time they put one of their, you know, young fighters in the ring with, with Kenneth Sims. But Kenneth Sims, to me, he's the guy that I really feel could, could, could compete with the top guys at 140. And we talk about... What should Comey do next? What should Pedraza do next? I feel like what they should do next is get and top rank. What they should do is give Kenneth Sims Jr. the opportunity against these guys because if he can beat those guys, then that shows he belongs at that creme de la creme elite level. Because when we look at his career, it's a really interesting career. You know, this is a guy Kenneth Sims who he's lost two close fights to guys like you know Showbox mainstays like Samuel Tsunami Samuel Taya, um, you know Rolando Chinia. You know, he fought uh, Montana Love in a fight that many people thought he won four years ago. And uh, he wound up getting a draw in that fight. Montana Love has since then, you know, signed a matchroom boxing and been able to push his career forward. So I'm looking at 140. I'm seeing a lot of these guys being, being able to push their career forward. And they, didn't, and, and they don't have a Elvis Rodriguez upset victory on the B side. They don't have anything like that. Um, this is a guy that I, I really feel like he has the boxing skills. He has the athleticism. He has a, a lot of attributes. Maybe, maybe maybe not the best punchy power in the world, but he's a, just a very well-rounded fighter. And I feel like this guy is a, a top contender in the 140 division, and he's not getting his chance to really prove it. So if Comey and Pedraza are going to be opponents for people, I would like to see them be an opponent for Kenneth Sims Jr. Because uh, you know, just last weekend, uh, August 21st, he uh, in a fight that most people didn't even know happened, he fought on one of those... You know, intro box cards, for those of you who are really, really you know, boxing nerds like me, intro box is like this new 
boxing promotional entity that started doing like club show boxing um, in Orlando, Florida. Uh, and Kenneth Sims headlined the card recently. Um, he fought an Argentinian named Christian Ruben Mino for the WBA Intercontinental title and he scored a, a, a fifth round stoppage victory. So he beat Elvis Rodriguez and he's fought in a couple of the okay guys on some cards. But he hasn't really gotten those fights to really break him out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like he should get in those fights that could, could give him the opportunity to break out and push his career forward. And he hasn't done that. So, when we talk about, again, when we talk about Pedraza, as my good buddy Rick Lazer would say, he's on the back nine. He's not in the clubhouse, but he's on the back nine. He's toward the latter stages of his career. Same goes for Comey. F credible, formidable guys, but they're on the back nine. Um, let Kenneth Sims Jr. get get his shot at one of these guys. And I feel like if he could beat one of these guys, then he's shown you on not one occasion, but two occasions, that he can he can fight with some of the top 140 pounders in the world. And um that would then allow him to, you know, show what he could do at the elite elite crumb dealer crumb level. So yeah, Kenneth Sims Jr., it's time for him to get the big fights. I'm sick of him getting overlooked. I'm sick of seeing guys who, you know, were lucky to get a draw with him like Montana Love you know, get to push their careers forward. I'm sick of seeing guys like, you know, Elvis Rodriguez still get fight dates against on, on, on big cards, but then Kenneth Sims Jr. has got to fight on intro box. It's just, it's, it's fucked up what's happening to him. He's called the honor Barbosa Jr. Barbosa want to fight T.O., which I don't quite understand. I mean, let's, let's take a look at the rankings, man. I, I don't want to just sit here and say Kenneth Sims deserves this and Kenneth Sims deserves that. Let's see if he's actually ranked and if politically these fights can make any sense. But I'm, I'm just saying... After that win, he should have really been been able to push his career forward. But uh, let me see, 140, 54, 147. All right, 140, all right, 140. So we look at we look at the 140 rankings so far. I'm looking through them. I don't see Kenneth Sims Jr. ranked anywhere. But um, that's okay. Neither is Elvis Rodriguez. And, and, and he was, you know, I believe he was a ranked five when uh, Kenneth Sims beat him, at least in one of the governing bodies. So I'm just saying, like, there's a, there's a really good fighter in there. He's not old. He's 28 years old. He's been tested. He's fought. You know, he's actually had the legitimate development of a fighter, you know, for fighting on showbox against tough opponents like Rolando Chinilla, like Tsunami Samuel Taylor, like Montana Love. He, he fought Elvis Rodriguez Jr. You know, he's been a Manny Pacquiao sparring partner for the Floyd fight. So he's a very well experienced guy. And he's long been one of the best kept secrets in this weight class. And I think after a fight like last night, where we pretty much know that Comey. And Pedraza, they're not going to do at 140 what, what, what they did at 35. Instead of putting them in fights where they're going to lose for sure, let's put them in a fight where we don't know if they're going to win or, or lose. You know, put them in a 50-50 in a, in a, in a fight against Kenneth Sims Jr. You know, Kenneth Sims Jr., give him this chance if, if he can show his class against those guys and it shows he's ready for that next level. And, he, and then he can get the uh, fairness and opportunity to push his career forward. That's all we're asking for in life, and that's all we're asking for in boxing is a little bit of fairness. And um, just justice for a guy that earned it. He beat he beat one of the top prospects just last year. So, and he's picked up two wins since that fight as well. So, yeah, make that what you will. Uh, Kenneth Sims Jr., one of the best one forty pounders that nobody's talking about, should get his chance to shine against Comey and Pedraza. Make one of those fights happen next. You know, top rank Bob Aaron, Brad Gilman, Bruce Champler. Let's make it happen. You know, so. You, let, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about what I'm saying about Kenneth Sims Jr.? You know, how do you think he would match up against guys like Comey and Pedraza? Leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take, take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. And I think uh, True School Sports, he's the truth. One of the best YouTube. The best. Ooh, the, the number one. Number one. Brandon, you've been there, man, and you're building up a good following Thank with you. us. Thank you. And I'm proud to be a part of what you're doing, too. Mm -hmm. You are spectacular. And, uh, you know. Thank you, man. All the best to through school boxing and keep up the good work.